Welcome back to Seeing Family Outdoors. As always, please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video if you do, and leave any comments and questions you have below on content you wanna see or places you think that we got this topic wrong on. Today, we're gonna to talk about Hornaday's Precision Rifle cartridges, and there's three of them, the 6.5, the 7, and 300 PRC, and we're gonna answer a question of which of these do we think are long-term winners, like I think the 6.5 PRC is, and maybe which ones we don't think have the, the things necessary to stick around for the long term, like I think might be the case with the 300 PRC. So before we go through all three of the cartridges, at a high level, these precision rifle cartridges from Hornaday, across the board, there's nothing to really dislike about any of the things that Hornaday's done. Really cool cartridges that all have a similar parent case. So if, you're, if we line them up here and you look at them, they all have the same parent case. So the 375 Ruger being the parent case and we have different um, lengths that those cartridges have been trimmed to where the bullets are seated out. So we've got the 300 PRC at our full long magnum action at 3.7 inches. Uh, the 7 PRC is sitting at that 3.340 inch mark and our 6.5 PRC, which is around that 2.9 to 3 inch mark, kind of that short action magnum cartridge. Um, they've all got the same type of shoulder angle on them and they're all designed to be loaded and shot with these long for caliber bullets. So long for caliber means that they have a high ballistic coefficient, they're higher in weight so their sectional density goes up and generally these hold their energy better at long distance um, and at any point distance off of the muzzle they, they do a better job at retaining energy than your more standard weight cartridge, standard weight bullets for, um, for caliber. So we see heavier bullets, they're designed so that they load out longer. So when this bullet's seated, it doesn't dive in past the shoulder and impede into that powder column. So they're really optimally loaded for that. The rifles that they're chambered in are chambered for that type of bullet to be loaded. Um, really good chamber specifications that come out. And Hornaday, to their credit, has done an awesome job at having different tiers of ammunition or for different jobs. So they have their match ammo, that we have some of that here. They have their Precision Hunter line, which uses their ELDX bullet, um, so a more high BC bullet designed for hunting. And they have their CX bullet line um, that they load these also in. That's kind of their outfitter line. It's a pure, a pure copper bullet. So they offer different loadings. Uh, they have hand-loaded dies for them. They have the brass available. Hornaday, one thing that I will always give props to when they come out with a cartridge, it's well supported from an ammunition, from a component, and from a reloading die side. So that's something that's always in the favor of all three of these cartridges, which is why none of them will probably go away permanently, but some of them may have more prominence when it comes to the availability from other ammunition manufacturers on what's made available. So with that out of the way, I'll work through all three of the cartridges. Let's start with the 6.5 PRC. So the 6.5 PRC is based on the .264 or 6.5 millimeter bullet. Um, that was made really popular with Hornaday's cartridge they released a few years before the Precision or the PRC line with the 6.5 Creedmoor. So the 6.5 PRC aspires to push more velocity on that same bullet to get better downrange performance and have more energy at extended range. So let's take a look quick at some numbers. We're gonna see how well that this cartridge achieves that objective. And I think when you start looking at the numbers, you'll see, man, the 6.5 PRC is probably a cartridge that's here to stay. So let's take a quick look. When we look at the 6.5 PRC, we'll, we'll walk it from kind of your left to right on this. I look at the 6.5 PRC as our cartridge. This is info on the 142 grain Nosler Acubon taken right off of Nosler's low data. So we're pushing an overall length close to three inches, rim diameter at 0.532 inches. I already mentioned that's 142 grain bullet, that BC, G1 BC at 0.625. Sectional density is getting up there pushing 0.3, which is a big, uh, a big mark in sectional density. So we're really heavy for caliber, pushing a muzzle velocity of 3113. All of these muzzle velocities come from Nosler's low data and it's the fastest low data that they publish for each one of the cartridges, just to keep it consistent. Point blank range, plus or minus three inches, is 316 yards on this cartridge, 
and the 10 mile per hour wind at 400 yards, you're gonna see about 7.7 .7 inches of wind deflection. So that bullet at that velocity bucks the wind pretty darn well. And this last number at 1800 feet per second, we're seeing 945 yards is where the bullet drops below 1800 feet per second. All right, I'll come back here quick. I like to use this 1800 feet per second mark because many bullets in the market once they drop below about 1,800 feet per second, expansion starts to become unreliable at that point. Uh, the Acubon Long Range and the bullets that we have here with like the ELDX advertise that they open and perform well below that velocity. Look at the, even, even on the ELDX that talks about performing well below that velocity, they still like to show the bullet at 1,800 feet per second. It's just a kind of a staple number we use for where a bullet expands and performs well on game. So you're getting out really far on the 6.5 PRC. Now let's look at four other cartridges, uh, similar, where they use the same bullet. So we're using the same bullet, we're using the 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 284 Norma, 264 Wind Mag, and 26 Nosler. So when we go across here, we'll jump all the way over and look at muzzle velocities. We see the 6.5 Creedmoor is kind of your most, I call it anemic round at 2733. And then we're getting all the way up in the, the, the 26 Nosler. The only one faster is the 26 Nosler at 3,346 feet per second. That 26 Nosler is a real, call it a real barrel burner. You know, it, it, it pushes a whole bunch of velocity out. You're getting a really flat trajectory, but you start to have uh, barrels are a replacement part on some of these. And especially it's true with the 26 Nosler. We'll get some more. Numbers here, you see that the 6.5 PRC, aside again from that 26 nozzler, is going to have better point blank range and do better with wind drift as well. So the takeaway is that this 142 grain Acubond, it really outperforms the rest of the cartridges that are out there, aside from the 26 nozzler um, and even the 264 wind mag, which is a relatively old cartridge. You know, that's getting back, you know, into the the belted Magnum craze in the, the 50s and 60s when that cartridge was released and it really saw kind of a resurgence recently with the focus on 6.5 Creedmoor coming to market. So this 264 Wind Mag was kind of, I would almost call kind of a dead and defunct cartridge at a certain point. Um, but this craze in high BC bullets has brought it to the limelight and the 6.5 PRC is outstripping that even in that short action, uh, more compact package. So this is one low data example from Nosler and one bullet size. Let's take a look at Barnes low data for the same cartridges. So we look at Barnes, we see the 6.5 PRC again, it's a little bit loaded a little bit shorter this time, um, but we're still maintaining a high muzzle velocity a little faster because we're shooting a 127 grain bullet. This is being an all copper bullet. Um, still have similar numbers where on point blank range and wind deflection. But when we compare that to the other cartridges, it still stands out. So this isn't just, you know, one data source. I, I like to, when we're looking at these, it's nice to be able to compare a couple of data sources from different manufacturers and different low data to get a better view of how these cartridges perform. And that's why I wanted to choose a Nosler and a Barnes low data. Uh, we could grab Hornaday as well. Uh, Sometimes I even like to avoid, if I'm talking about a Hornaday cartridge, let's look at other manufacturer stuff just to really even out the playing field on, on who we're looking at from a data set. Um, but again, the only one that sticks out here that's even close is the 26 Nosler. It's not actually listed in Barnes low data. So we did a little bit, um, use some of Nosler data and some other boutique ammunition manufacturers that have velocities listed and rounded out an average. And the average is in line with what I'd expect based on the data that we saw from the other sources. So what, what is there not to like, or what's the concerns maybe long-term on the 6.5 PRC? Well, I'd argue its biggest competitor is the 6.5 Creedmoor. The 6.5 Creedmoor came out before this cartridge. You have less recoil on the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, 6.5 Creedmoor is very, very available. Um, not that the 6.5 PRC isn't. If you go to a lot of rifle manufacturers, uh, it's the most available out of the PRC lineup because it fits in an action that's well established with the short mag action. So either your short action ultra magnums or the SOM cartridges or the Winchester short magnums have already paved the way. There's plenty of actions available that fit the 6.5 PRC. Um, 
but the 6.5 Creedmoor is very tempting from its low recoil, uh, still great performance that you can have downrange with it. You're just now competing on, do you wanna really push the envelope and get more point blank range effectiveness, more energy on target downrange? Are you maybe trying to push the 6.5 bullet up into an L category? Or you know, if you're hunting deer or smaller game, you might be really satisfied with the 6.5 Creed more. So if I'm looking at these as well to the upper end, say the 26 Nosler, the 26 Nosler is sure faster, but what do we have working against it? It's got to fit inside of a longer action. You need to have a longer barrel to get the performance out of it. So your overall package length is bigger and my barrel life is significantly shorter. So I can fit this 6.5 PRC in a 24 inch barrel, short action rifle. I could probably see a lot of 22 inch barrels even coming up on the 6.5 PRC. So it can be optimized in a shorter barrel length and a shorter, more compact overall package. So if you're looking for a hunting rifle and you wanna maybe do some long range work, it's I think the 6.5 PRC is a winner. And I think we'll see the 6.5 PRC stick around for a long time to come. So that's the 6.5 PRC. Let's look at the 7 PRC, our next one up here. So the 7 PRC is the newest, uh, the newest kit on the block, so to say, when it comes to the, the PRC cartridges. It's sitting in that 3.340 inch um, cartridge overall length. So there's a lot of rifles, again, that are chambered for that size. The thing about the 7 PRC right now is that the amount of load data to compare it across the board is really limited. The Hornaday has some great load data out there, um, but I'd like to see more to come as we before we really dive into numbers and dissect it. I can say what this cartridge does well is what all the PRCs does well. When you see those long for caliber bullets, you can see them far out. Um, you still get really good velocities when you compare the velocities that Hornaday would publish, you see a significant push over the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. Uh, what I'm gonna be curious on is when we start seeing more low data and more things available to compare maybe the seven Rem Mag to the seven PRC at 140 grain bullet. And what's the difference that we start to see when we're loading uh, for more traditional bullet lengths? I'm curious how those cartridges will stack up, but if you're looking for these more heavy for caliber bullets. I think it's hard to knock the 7 PRC. Two of the things that I think will keep it around long term are um, one is the saturation of 7 millimeter options in the market. I just put two out here around it and I didn't even grab the 7 Rem Mag. Um, I don't have a 7 Rem Mag, but it's been out there for the same amount of time. The 264, 264 Win Mag, 7 Rem Mag came out around the same time. Only one of those is really popular today and it's the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. So you have that, there's the 280 Ackley Improved. I did a video about the 280 Ackley Improved um, about a week ago. Love that cartridge. It, it has a lot of things to like about it, especially in standard hunting bullet sizes. And then I also put out my go-to hunting rifle, which is the 28 Nosler. So the 28 Nosler, not quite as overbore as your 26 Nosler, but it is putting a lot of velocity and a lot of hurt downrange. So those are the things that I think the seven millimeter PRC is gonna to have to compete against. Um, but I wouldn't hesitate to, to say that the seven PRC is gonna be a long-term staple. It's the right length. It's gonna be more moderate in recoil compared to some bigger rifles, but it still has the ability to put down range power onto animals, which is gonna vote in its favor. I think it's gonna be more down to how does it, how does this seven millimeter thing shake out with your fast cartridges like your 28 Nosler? You've already had a long-term king like the seven millimeter Rem Mag in market. 280 Ackley has been kind of hot on the scene over the last 10 to 15 years as well. So where does the seven PRC fit in and will it have a long-term spot to maybe dethrone some of these other competitors? We'll see and we'll do some more looking on the seven PRC as more data becomes available. I, I do think this is one that's more likely than not to stick around just because it fits such a wide range of rifle, which is kind of the, the other thing that's in its favor. You know, you think about all your rifles that are capped out at 3.340 inches or anything that's chambered in a 300 Win Mag can be chambered in a 7 PRC. So that's something that the rifle definitely has going for it. So we'll be excited to talk more about this one as time goes on. 
Uh, and that one, now we're gonna go over to our last cartridge and that's the 300 PRC. So the 300 PRC, uh, I, I, like, I love all of these cartridges really. I think that they have, you can't throw a stone at them from what they're capable of performing on, but this is probably the, the, the odd man out for me, even though I really like it. And it comes into a few things. The first one is going to be its overall length. So this one is at almost 3.7 inches in cartridge overall length. So it is a really, really long cartridge. Why does this matter? We can go to some really popular rifles, like your Tika hunting rifles, for instance. Um, you can look at a lot of Winchester Model 70s that are manufactured, Winchester XPR, Ruger American. Um, There's just to name a few that they do not have magazines that allow for this 300 PRC. Now the, the Model 70 does offer some that have been in this longer Magnum at certain points. Um, not in their real standard lineup. They have some 375s that are in their Safari Hunter line, but nothing that's in their hunt, hunting lineup. So they could, but it's not mainstream and it's, it's not as available as you'd think. And I, I think that's gonna be one of the biggest hurdles that this cartridge has to overcome is that when you want to talk mainstream availability, I want to have it in my affordable hunting rifles that have off the shelf, pretty good accuracy that I can buy a box of ammo with and go hunt. And that's what the seven and the six, five PRC, six, five PRC has already shown it in droves. And I think you'll see more of that come with the seven and those rifles don't have the mag length to accommodate the 300 PRC, which is why I don't know how this will be long-term or what you'll see for other ammo manufacturers pick up on it. Uh, there are plenty of rifles that do chamber out to that length, something to keep in mind. And I'll put its big competitor next to it that it has to go up against, which is the 300 Winchester Magnum. Got more of a standard 150 grain bullet loaded in this guy, uh, but you can see the difference in overall case length, so overall cartridge length, not case length, um, of how much further this bullet is seated out. But when we zoom in and we look at the brass length or the cartridge or the, sorry, the, the brass case length, not the cartridge length, the case length, um, there's not a big difference. They're relatively the same size in length. Uh, there's a little more volume available in the 300 PRC because we've removed the belt from the PRC, but we've kept that same diameter of case. So the 300 Win Mag advantage is its length and how it fits into a standard length action or that 3.340 inch action. So that's a big one. I think that action length. The other one, let's go back to our data side and look, I think it's gonna come into recoil. And here on this chart, we're gonna show the other two, which I th I'd argue are the two most popular 300 or 30 caliber magnums today, the 300 Winchester short magnum and the 300 Win Mag. So we got them with two different bullet lengths or weights just to show some difference here. But we're gonna show the 300 Winchester magnum, uh, the 300 Win Mag, they're loaded with 165 and 180 grain bullets respectively. They're pushing their velocities at 3130 for the 165 and 2960 for uh, the 300 Win Mag. We're then taking the 300 PRC with its 212 grain bullet. Again, we're talking heavy for cartridge bullets at 2860. All three of those in a nine pound rifle. So let's talk the same rifle, the same type of setup and take a look at the recoil. You are seeing a significant increase 50% roughly, maybe a little bit less than 50% from the 180 grain 300 wind mag up to that 300 PRC. So a big hike in, in recoil when you're holding those rifles the same. And I'm gonna contextualize this quick. Um, we'll put another chart up. So this is to accompany what, what does that really mean? So if we're gonna take the 300 PRC and let's say we took that rifle and we made it a 14 and a half pound rifle. So let's add five and a half pounds to our rifle. Now our felt recoil is the same as that 300 short mag and a nine pound rifle. Or we add four pounds of weight into that rifle. So we maybe we're using a heavier barrel, a heavier scope, uh, a chassis, bigger setup in both of those. And by adding weight, we can have that felt recoil get down to the th same as a hunting rifle in 300 wind mag or 300 short mag. Um, so that's what it takes to get the recoils in check. And I'm not counting for muzzle brakes or, or things like that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of muzzle brakes from uh, a noise side of things. Um, I'm getting my first taste into the suppressor world. 
I know that's a, a big one too, but when you're in these 30 calibers and you start wanting a 26 inch barrel, and then you're having a seven to eight inch suppressor, or even a five inch suppressor on it, you've got a really, really big rifle package that you're, you're maneuvering around now. So it's something to keep in mind is the envelope dimensions that you want in a rifle, and I think that's another knock on this 300 PRC. And a little bit dramatic here, but that 300 PRC with that 212 grain bullet at the velocity it's pushing, recoil is within three pounds of a 375 H and H Magnum. Um, and that's a, those both that 300 PRC load and that 375 H and H load are Hornaday standard loads that I, I grabbed, um, as are the 180 and 165. All of these loads come from Hornaday. So you see the type of recoil we're talking about. You're getting up into 375 H&H &H territory, and you're really going to want to look at your ability to put the bullet down range and shoot consistently with this 300 PRC. I think it will be challenging, and I think that's the biggest reason. I don't know if the 300 PRC is a long-term, huge commercially adopted cartridge. While I do think that's, I'm, a, I'm very certain that will be the case with the 6.5 PRC, and more likely than not will be the case with the 7 PRC as well. So what are your thoughts on these cartridges? Have you shot any of the PRC rifles yourself? Any places that we should be maybe taking in data below? Let us know and put it in the comments below. Appreciate you taking the time to watch. And until next time, get out there and enjoy the outdoors.